dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. There was an incident long ago that a scholar had a speech, a very important speech. And he prepared what he wanted to say in a small sheet of paper. So his friend wanted to do a practical joke on him. So they stole it. They took it from his pocket before the speech. So as soon as he stood in front of people, was searching, it's not there. So he put his hand in the second pocket and he says, I always carry a backup. I always carry with me another copy. So he took it off. Why am I saying this is because when I came here now, this is put upside down, the paper. <laughs> Although this was done unintentionally for sure, and I rarely do glance at the paper. Now, Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Najm, Surah Al-Najm is very special, very beautiful surah. It is the surah that contains the first ever sujood tilawa, prostration of recitation of the Holy Quran, in the whole Quran. It was revealed in Mecca. And it has a very powerful rhythm and meaning to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the one who is denying the hereafter or not doing enough towards it. He didn't get any information from any of the previous prophets and messengers. Whatever was revealed in the leaflet of Musa alayhi salam and Ibrahim, peace be upon him, the one who fulfilled all the requests or orders of Allah Almighty. And what is mentioned in that message that no soul will ever carry the burden or sins of another. And that for each person, his own efforts is what counts. And that all his efforts are going to be presented and seen. And then he will be recompensed for them completely or perfectly. Here we have some strong messages regarding what you should do in this world. The efforts that you are doing. Effort is any action or gain that you get usually for a purpose. This is considered sa'i in Arabic. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that each person will have in his record only what he himself did. Whatever he worked for, whatever he gained. And that will be shown in the hereafter. And then he will be judged, and then he will be either rewarded or punished. Clear? We have some important questions or messages. The first one. How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the person will have only whatever he has done? He will not have any more. While we know, for example, the Messenger وسلم, says, anyone who guide a person to a goodness, he will have a similar reward like that of that person without diminishing any of the reward of that person. True? But here Allah Almighty is saying, no. He will not have. That is why the scholars who say that it is useless to do any good deed to the dead. Because Allah Almighty says that for each soul and person, only what it did. It didn't do that, so it's useless. However, as we have mentioned, we have so many other verses and also hadith of the Messenger وسلم, stating otherwise. The scholar reply, and they say that this ayah is stating the recompense the payment. And it's not talking about the generosity of Allah Almighty or the blessing from Allah Almighty. Means this is the minimum that you will ever be rewarded. You will get your full reward entirely without diminishing any part of it. It's true. Let us give an example so that to make it clear. You are working at a company, they'll tell you that this is your salary. Nothing will be deducted from it. This is your full salary. You will get it by the end of the year or the end of every month. Fine. 
It doesn't mean they are not going to give you a bonus or a promotion later. Okay? But it means that they are not going to take any part of it. That is what the ayah is stating. However, the second ayah is making a very strong statement that this will be presented or shown. Everything that you have done will be pre presented to whom? The first person who will see it is you yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Anyone who does the weight of an autumn, an autumn's weight of goodness, he will see it. And anyone who does an autumn's weight of evil, he will see it. So the first one is you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, his book will be presented to him. This is the record. This takes us to the second point, which is that whatever you do is actually recorded. But Allah Almighty already knows it. Why would it be recorded? Recording is very important because the person himself will forget it. When Allah Almighty will present the person with whatever he has done, this is your book, read it, he will remember it. Ah, okay. Do you forget what you have done? We often do. There are some things that are unforgettable, yes. But for most of what you do, especially regularly, you forget them. So a person who is used to good deed, he might not remember most of what he has done as good deed. It becomes a nature. The person who does bad deeds, he is doing, going to do it routinely, without noticing, without remembering. God forbid. But everything is recorded, will be presented. The second point, he's saying the presentation is not only that, but to Allah Almighty Himself and to the rest of the creation of Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran and say, O Muhammad, to the believers, work. And Allah Almighty will see your work and his messenger and the believers. What does that mean? See, there are many points here. The first one is stating justice, as we have said. Here is speaking about either honor or disgrace. Honoring to the righteous one, disgrace to the bad ones. Righteous people and bad people both of them have secrets, true or false. Yeah? Righteous people, they do some kind of ibadah and good deeds and nobody knows about it. You are his friend and you don't know. Sometimes this is shown after his death, sometimes in an incident, then you realize, subhanAllah, he's doing so much good deeds. He's taking care of so many orphans, he has built so many mosques, he has, and so on and so forth. Nobody knows, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even their spouses, sometimes they don't know. Because he's doing it for whom? For the sake of Allah Almighty. This is the effort that is rewarded. In short, whatever is done for the sake of Allah Almighty. So they have their secret deeds. And furthermore, there is another type. The bad people are also the same. They're doing, usually they commit their crimes in secret. The second part is the, the deeds of the heart. The thoughts, the ideas, the remembrance of the heart. The love or hatred that a person holds in his ha heart, the envy or good feeling for other people, and so on. These are actions of the hearts in Islamic literature. Clear? So who knows about that? Nobody, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Allah Almighty wants to reward this person and honor him in the hereafter. So these will be presented in the hereafter in front of everybody. He used to do so and so, he used to do so and so. The bad deeds, same. He used to do so and so, he used to do so and so. This is an honor that is a disgrace in front of everybody. If they are going to honor you, but they are going to do it without taking photos, without see anybody in the company knowing, and it's only you and so on. Is it the same like when they hold, for example, a ceremony and they call your name in front of everybody and you are ascending the stage and receiving it and so on. You get the idea? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater example. But these are similar. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anyone who betrays any trust, he will have a flag of mistrust in the hereafter. This is the mistrust of so and so. 
This is the betrayal of trust of so and so by his name. Right? That is why the Messenger وسلم, warned all the Muslims do not come to me in the hereafter with taking the rights of others, no matter how little it might be. I don't want that in my followers. Sadly, there are many who are doing it nowadays. You do want these flags in the hereafter. Do you want it? You want it. However, the Messenger وسلم, is warning us. You will see it and also others will see it. So that is why we have to get rid of any rights of other people as soon as possible. Ask them for forgiveness, return it to them, and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and correct your path. This is a very serious matter. Now, the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are for the good deeds. And the good deeds and the good efforts are many. We have mentioned that the general term is that they should be for the sake of Allah Almighty. But there are some points that people might not realize. For example, someone who is going to work every day, leaving, mashallah, at 6 a.m., returning back at 3 or 5 or whenever, depends on the traffic, and says, I'm wasting my life. What are you doing? This is not for the sake of Allah Almighty. True? This is for dunya, for this world. This could be an understanding. A very strange incident happened at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was sitting with the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum. A man passes by, inshallah, very effortlessly. And he is very eager and active, moving actively. So they say, MashaAllah, how beautiful is that if it was for the sake of Allah Almighty? If he's going now to do something for the sake of Allah Almighty, how beautiful is that? Because that is the etiquette of the believers. The etiquette of the hypocrites, when they want to do some goodness, they are lazy. The righteous one, when they want to do a good deed, they are active. When they want to do a bad deed, they are very hesitant and lazy. You get the idea? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran about the hypocrites. And when they stand for the salah, do they pray? Yes, they do pray. When they stand for the salah, they stand lazily. Very lazy. They're very lazy in it. So here he is, mashallah, very active and eager and moving so fast and strong. So they say, how beautiful is that if it was for the sake of Allah Almighty? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained. He says, if he was going to gain some sustenance, halal sustenance, for his elder parents, this is for the sake of Allah Almighty. If he is going to work to get some halal sustenance for his little children, this is for the sake of Allah Almighty. And if he is going to work for himself, so that he will protect himself from haram, this is also for the sake of Allah Almighty. You see the generosity and mercy from Allah Almighty? He opened the channels for you. As long as you are respecting the guidelines from Allah Almighty, you are not harming anybody. You are not taking the rights of anyone. Your activity, your efforts are for the sake of Allah Almighty. Because you are doing it in obedience of the order of Allah Almighty who said in the Holy Quran, it is Allah Almighty. He is the one who facilitated life for you on earth. So move around on it and seek sustenance. Work. That will get sustenance. So you are doing it in obedience. So of course it will be for the sake of Allah Almighty. Correct? Furthermore, if somebody is working to seek, the example of seeking halal, by the way, is immortalized by Allah Almighty through the action of Hajar alayhi salam, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When she was running to seek some water and some food and sustenance for herself and her baby, Allah Almighty made this eternal part of the ibadah of all believers after her until the end of times. Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Seven times the Messenger وسلم, explained this and he says, and that is the Sa'i that people do between them because of Hajar. See how important it is to spend some efforts, work hard to gain sustenance. Muslims are not lazy. Islam is not lazy. Allah Almighty does not want you to be lazy. And that is why the reward for working is so huge. The reward for mental work is also huge. And in fact, even if you make a mistake, you will still get reward from Allah Almighty. 
That is how important in Islam to do something, not to be lazy. Muslims used to do that. Sadly, many Muslim people and Muslim countries now, they are very lazy. Each one among us probably can do much more than what he is doing nowadays. True or false? However, then we are lazy. No, this is not what Allah Almighty loves. Do what you can, that's it. You'll be rewarded in this world and in the hereafter. That is how Allah Almighty explained this. Another one is teaching people and guiding them. This is something that is also made eternal in the Holy Quran when Allah Almighty mentioned to us the example of the man who came running towards his people telling them, follow the messengers so that you'll be saved. He was explaining to them the belief system. Allah Almighty didn't mention his name because the name is not important. What is important is the effort that he put. Allah Almighty immortalized that forever in the Holy Quran. Mentioning it in the Holy Quran. Another important thing is helping the poor and the needy and the widows and the orphans. All the weaker parts in the society. And some people might overlook this, although it is hugely rewarding in Islam. Let me give you two hadith from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that you will get the concept. Imagine someone spending one full month in Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi in Medina, the Masjid of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the good deeds are multiplied, the Salah is multiplied. Fine? For one full month, i'tikaf, not leaving the Masjid ever, except for the necessary thing. Worshipping Allah Almighty and remembering Allah Almighty for one full month. Another man saw someone who was in need and he didn't give him anything. He just walked with him towards his need. He helped him go towards his need. That is the only thing he did. Means try to help him out in any way. Which one is more rewarding in the sight of Allah Almighty? The second one, not the first one. Because the benefit here is more. The first one, the benefit is only for yourself. Got the idea? Same for teaching knowledge. Same. Teaching is much more rewarding. Let me give you another hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is slightly different. It gives the same concept. Imagine a person fasting the days. All the time. So it's regularly, regularly fast. Alhamdulillah. Day on, day off, or every Monday and Thursday, or three days in a month, the minimum, and so on, throughout his life. Another person who spends the night in salah, non-obligatory salah, everyday prayer. Take that, that person, whether they are two different people or one single person. Compare that to a person who is trying to help a widow or an orphan with his need. Taking care of an orphan or a widow. In the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, the one who takes care of an orphan or a widow has the reward of someone who spends his days fasting and his nights in prayers. Yeah. So the efforts, you need to be clever. You want to get the maximum you can from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of that comes from this. Now, final point we will finish inshallah the khutbah today with is about the recompense from Allah Almighty is mostly in the hereafter not in this world mostly in the hereafter however still Allah Almighty might give a person in this world but the actual covenant between you and Allah Almighty the actual contract between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the reward will be in the hereafter the reward will be in the hereafter However, Allah Almighty promised that He will give you your reward in full, but He also promised that He will multiply it for you, multiply it for you. So why Allah Almighty in this ayah did not say that He will multiply? This is a very good place to mention it, supposedly, according to our limited mind. Isn't it? This is so powerful. We're trying to encourage people, and yet you did not mention that. So that you will realize the preciseness of the Holy Quran. Subhanallah. No one can do that except Allah Almighty. Here, he is not speaking about the good efforts only. True? He is speaking about efforts in general. 
So some of it are good, some of them are bad, as we have explained. So if he will say that it will be multiplied, that would be wrong. Because the bad deeds are not multiplied. Right? So that is why in this sense, Allah Almighty, when he spoke about generally, he's speaking about justice. Each one will be dealt justly. Each one will be dealt justly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, inshallah, to his divine truth and make his good for ourselves, our families, neighbors, and society. And then to all humanity. Amin. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sallam.